Hey guys, I thought we'd take a brief look at a table I have here in Manual D, which is Duck Design. I put it to Google Plus the other day, asking everybody whether or not technicians should be able to know how to size duck work or do load calculations. But this is a big part of our business, and as you see, this is a chart about duck gain or loss. We're just going to take a second look at one aspect, and maybe we'll break this up into a lot of videos to show but just different aspects of duct design and load calculation. As you see on the left, you have temperature rise or drop per degree temperature difference per 100 feet. Let's say that we are in a crawl space. We have supply air that is 55 degrees and crawl space air that is 75 degrees. We have a 20 degree difference. So every degree on the left side of the table, you see 0 0.1, 0.5, 1.0, 1.5 will be per temperature degree difference. So that one would then be 20 because we have a 20 degree difference between our duct temperature and crawl space temperature. If we look to the bottom of the chart, you see 1000 CFM. We follow that line up to where we see the 500 feet per minute line on the graph. That's pretty close to what we would be at between 500 and 700 feet per minute. And that is 0.4. Now this is uninsulated ductwork. So 0.4 out of 20 degree difference would mean our ductwork temperature would rise 8 degrees per 100 feet. Now that's a pretty significant rise. Of course, that's uninsulated ductwork. So obviously that's why we insulate our ductwork. Now let's look to the bottom of the chart and see what we can do by insulating it. Our chart is dealing with ductwork that is in a 2 to 1 aspect ratio. Let's say 20 by 10 ductwork, something like 24 by 12. Something that is twice as long as it is high. Considering that ductwork, if we insulate it to R8, as seen on the chart, we have a 0 0.10 multiplier. Meaning if we would have lost 8 degrees in that run, we would only lose 0.8 degrees by insulating it to R8. So you can see a big difference between not insulating the ductwork having R8. You see R6 and R8 are pretty close, but as you go toward R2, it gets a lot higher. You only get a quarter of the um, total, which would have been a two degree difference, which is a big difference over the life of a system. And as you see at the bottom, you see aspect ratios for different kinds of ductwork, and actually round is the most efficient because you have the least surface area communicating with outside air. All square ductwork has more surface area for friction and more surface area to transfer heat. So round is the most efficient, it's just not always the most reasonable as far as space. So that's a little bit about ductwork and energy loss through ductwork. We'll continue this series with a few other things shortly.